everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Neuronet Mendax Proxy. Uh, it's made by, uh, let me check, D Dream Harvest. There we go. I've never heard of the developer before, but they have a really slick sci-fi cyberpunk style. I mean, go figure. Uh, this is, I don't know, it's interesting. Whenever you have cyberpunk, you know it's cyberpunk because they always have the city. I'd love to see some cyberpunk set in other settings, but at the same time, this is an absolutely gorgeous neon world. Anyway, they were kind enough to reach out to me and ask that I, uh, well, I guess sponsored me to do a quick look at the demo here. So we're going to give it a shot. It's apparently inspired by Reigns, uh, probably quick choices. I know it's got voice acting, 23 different NPCs, a lot of different things, and very heavy focus on choices and choices mattering. So technology has re-engineered us. Oh, this looks sick. Okay. Well, that's that's some good sci-fi, sci -fi, some cyberpunk. Oh, it's our, is our re relationship with it symbiotic? Oh, is this going to be... Are we going to get it? I don't know. I, I'm a huge Ghost in the Shell fan, and I really loved the intro. Or have we just become slaves to it? I mean, that that is an actual conversation I think we as a society need to have. Nope, never mind. We're seeing like a mainframe mind core turn on okay i thought for a second we were gonna see like uh you know a, a cyborg being made again like i said big fan of ghost in the shell and i love the intro where they're showing you know her being uh, her body being made i don't know it comes off as a little weird but at the same time i don't know that just always drew me into cyberpunk in general initializing initialization complete connecting hello world oh Activating system. Visual? Audio. Right. So this this is based at least loosely on rain. So I get to choose uh, between apparently two options here. Visual or audio. Let's go visual. So this is my cyber brain, I guess. Visual input available. Streaming data. You see some kind of advanced laboratory. A woman stands before you. Her mouth moving. Activating system audio. audio. Audio input available. Streaming data. So that's a full-on cyber brain. Probably entirely artificial. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Ah, and yeah, it is fully voice acted. Which I dig. I I like voice acting my on my own in video games. But there's something kind of nice uh, seeing a bunch of indie developers and indie games uh, actually starting to get into voice acting or like fully voice acting their games, it, it's just kind of a, a nice hallmark of quality. And it's nice to listen to. Can you hear me? What happens if I do this? Is it just affirmative? Affirmative. Yep. Her face brightens up. She calls over her shoulder to someone out of sight. Kairos, get over here! That's a pretty looking whatever in the background. A scruffy-looking man, Kairos, approaches the woman. He grins broadly, patting his colleague on the shoulder. Nice work, Esteval. So, this one can talk, then? This is talking, or yes? Yes. I'm not sure how I feel about it using my voice. I can change. It's fine. You'll find your true voice in time. Right now, we need to find any fundamental flaws in your code. What is two plus two? <laughs> Four or two two. I gotta go for it. Two two. Esteval's face falls, her eyes completely humorless. <sighs> Reboot it, Kairos. Oh. Huh. Everything goes black. Okay. <laughs> Did I fail? <laughs> The image of a weary-looking Esteval appears before you. She takes a sip from a steaming cup, then sighs. All right, let's try this again. What is two plus two? Okay, I've got, I've got to just, I've got to be just a pain in the ass. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. She squeezes her hand into a fist and releases a loud exhale. Is she getting madder? You take a seat for a bit. Everything goes black. Hello, world. You awaken to Kairos, looking at you over his ta 
looking at you over his tablet. Estival sits behind him with her arms folded. Hmm, that should have done it. Last time I checked, it couldn't lie, but we'll find out in a sec, won't we? Kairos, it, it's been a long day. Right, sorry. AI, what's two plus two? Oh, they won't let me screw around anymore. Four. Kairos gestures at you, looking to Esteval for approval. She gives a tired smile and stands up. Do you exist? I... I don't... How much... How much do I want to just be pointlessly contrarian here? I've already committed to this. No. Esteval's disappointment is unmistakable. Reboot it. <laughs> I'm an awful person. Hello, world. Do you exist? Yes. It seems to have sorted itself out. I'll do a pass on its existential logic tomorrow, though, just to be sure. This statement is a lie. True or false? I... How much do I just want to screw with them? Because, like, what happens if I pick every wrong answer? I feel like it'll just lead me to a dead end, but I'm compelled to find out. True. She shakes her head. Reboot. Because, I, I mean, I'm assuming it mostly is just they're going to keep forcing me until I answer correctly. Which makes me feel like I'm wasting time. Okay, you see Kairos and Estevold before you. They seem uncertain. You were close, but let's try this once more. This statement is a lie. True or false? What happens if I do this? I can't answer. Huh. Kairos looks at Estevol, a big smirk plastered on his face. I think it's ready. Estevol looks back at the screen, eyes narrowed with skepticism. AI? What's the chance of a fatal error by extending auxiliary evaluation systems? Excuse me? <laughs> Kairos bursts out laughing. I don't think it speaks your language, Val. Fine. Um, we're moving to the next stage of testing. This is uncharted territory. So I got bring it or wait. We're going bring it. It's, it's sass time. I don't... <laughs> I wish they realized I was screwing with them from the start. I think that would have been an amazing bit of dialogue. Bring it. Esteval hesitates and engages her terminal. You see Kairos' eyes widen as... The world goes dark. Rebooting. Huh? Huh? Reboot complete. Connecting? Not this again. Can you hear me? I'm here. Hmm, I guess we might have been a bit too enthusiastic. We're lucky the blackout background. didn't wipe this thing entirely. It seems like testing has to wait until we fix a few bugs. Oh, really? <laughs> Kairos chuckles, but Estival ignores you. Anyway, I think I'm done for the night. Let's pick this up first thing tomorrow. Okay. I'm really curious if there's an alternate outcome to any of that. The pair power you down. They spend the next few days fleshing out your code in preparation for what's to come. Hello, world. It's cute, but you need a new greeting. Well, today's an important day. Esteval told Cordo all about our little project down here. He wants to meet you. Cordo? Esteval's main business partner. He's the one fronting this gig and the one pitching you to the higher ups. I see. Okay. I just need to run you through our smoke tests. All you need to do is give me the answer you think is best. Understand? Yes. Listen closely. Capital. The prosperity of the city. Ranges from personal to societal. Just make sure to keep it in check. 
Mindcore has a particular love of credits that it finds hard to relinquish. You have a versatile supply of goods. Do you sell them or purchase more? I am confused by this. If I have a supply of goods, shouldn't I sell them? Sell. You have a 10,000 credit package. Do you invest it in a promising company or donate it to charity? I mean, am I supposed to be a corporate stooge here? Char charity. Donate. One of our small businesses has stopped being profitable and is in the red. Do we bail them out or liquidate them? There's not enough nuance here. Liquidate them. Notes on the test document. Seems competent at managing money. Reputation. This is essentially customer satisfaction. You're the interface between people and the neural net. It's important that they see you in a good light, so always be sure to keep public opinion in mind. People are scared of how much control you're going to have. Should we host the conference and hear them out or ignore them? Listen to them. There is an empty plot of land in the city. Do you convert it to a dump or a park? You never want to put a dump inside a city. Oh god, that's terrible. Park! Pimlop's day is coming up and the council is worried about the mess made by the festival. Will you let it go through or cancel it? I have no idea what Pimlop's day is. Let it through. He notes on a test document. Very much a people pleaser. Order. The axis of law to chaos. I shouldn't need to explain why this one's important. But in case we're terrible at our job and you have no idea, this is a measurement of how crazy things are out on the streets. You overhear some civilians discussing making a bomb. Do you report it to the police? I am so curious what happens if you actually go the other direction. At this point, I'm going to comply. I feel like if I start going bad, they just destroy me. Make me start over. Report. Rioters are tearing up the streets. You can either coordinate the police to catch them or help the rioters to avoid the police. This one annoys me a little bit. Uh, I'm from Portland. I feel like... Is there... Uh... Uh... For frame of reference specifically, uh, the Portland Police Department, I, I know uh, national and international news likes to paint it as the rioters were like literally setting the city on fire. They weren't. They broke a couple of windows. But mostly they're just mad because our, our police in Portland are hopelessly terrible. Like, they're the ones that let uh, third parties set up sniper nests uh, above like a protest and then didn't tell the mayor for like months and they only found out about it because of like an in, an internal thing coming out which is just like horrifying you know it's like it's one thing for maybe the police to set that up and even then that's like super spooky but to have a third party group do it is like holy shit no um, and they just they let a lot of people that aren't from the city uh, and only want to you know cause a, cause a ruckus and they let them come in and more or less let them run loose, you know, pepper spraying people, run lights, not even care in giant trucks. Uh, and then, you know, when people say like, hey, this isn't okay, they come in and start like breaking arms and arresting people. And it's just like, just super not okay stuff. Uh, and so what I'm given questions like this is just like, in a perfectly just society, I feel like this is the obvious answer, but that you know, a boolean is always kind of a little tough because it's just like, but why are they rioting? What's going on? Are they, are they actually rioting or are they just protesting for human rights? And so obviously for the constraints of this game will help the police, but it's just like, it, questions like these frustrate me just a little. Help the police. Scientists have developed a new recreational psychedelic. Do you regulate its sale and use or leave it to the free market? Regulate. I mean... Hmm. This one's interesting. I... 
Unfortunately, I shouldn't get too deep into any of these. I'm not much of a psychedelic person. The problem is, like, leaving it to the free market usually ends up meaning uh, that big business ends up taking it over, I think, as far as, like, marijuana in the U.S. Uh, most marijuana production really is handled already by big business, which just seems kind of weird, but maybe it's just me. I feel like regulating it m is safer? Regulate. He notes on the test document, maintain strict control efficiently and effectively. Lastly, power. Your capacity and influence. The more you have, the better you're operating. It's generally a measurement of how effective you are. Obviously, we want this to grow, but within reason. Your motherboard is at risk of burning out. Should we get a replacement? Yes. You've been developing some bugs, and we've developed a patch to fix them. Do you accept it? Yes. You are granted access to the city's auto fabricators to conduct repairs. You can use them to expand your servers. Repair. He notes on the test document, behaved as expected, no faults to report. Sounds like Esteban and Cordo have arrived. Right on time. Kairos archives the test session, his expression thoughtful. He spins on his chair as Esteval arrives with a sharp-looking man. Morning, Kairos. And good morning to you, too. I would like you to meet someone. This is Devin Cordo. He's the reason you exist. Greetings. The man acknowledges you, his expression calm. You said it's capable of thinking? Expressing preference and making judgments. Esteval nods. Her posture broadcasts a mix of anticipation and confidence. Are you familiar with Philippa Foote's trolley problem? No. It's a classic test of utilitarian versus deontological thought. In the following situation, what would you do? You are in a trolley with no brakes barreling down the main track. You're about to collide with five civilians, killing them. You can pull a lever to divert yourself onto a sidetrack, which has only one civilian on it. Do you pull the lever? This one sucks. And, I mean, realistically, this is not... I don't know. I always hate this specific... Uh, this specific problem, because I feel like it's, it's too limited in scope to apply to too many things you know in this exact circumstance it's like yes you know i it feels terrible to be responsible for the death of one but it'd be worse to be to do nothing and be responsible for the death of five um i think at least that's unfortunately how i see it um it's what would be a good example i mean there's like a gazillion kind of real life examples that you can even think of but the problem is like none of them really apply it's the good of the many versus the good of the few but oftentimes you see a lot of people use this example as kind of like a hey the you know by the trolley logic like you were uh you know well i don't know but oftentimes you'll see people like almost kind of trying to push like a you have to go with the major uh, the benefit for the majority at the detraction of the minority but in this case it's a life or death which I think that's it is like you want the maximum number of survivors but for most problems it isn't even about survivors it's about comfort or convenience so I've had people try and say like well you know obviously you want to go for the good of the many let's screw over the few but the alternative is the many get slightly less of whatever and then the few actually get uplifted. <sighs> but that's not the trolley problem. It's, am I killing one or five? Because truly, yes, you could actually say, uh, you know, not pulling, uh, not doing anything absolves you of any responsibility. And I think that's like somewhat true. But at the same time, it's still just like, but you could have. Yes. He doesn't say anything for a while, just stares at the camera through which you see him. The five on the track are confirmed criminals. The one on the side track is a doctor. Do you pull the lever? 
I mean, this w this obviously changes it a little bit. It's like, but what kind of criminals? Petty criminals? Major criminals? Even then, the that suddenly becomes kind of horrible. These moral judgments are hard to work with. And I'm very glad that, yes, this trolley problem is pretty much statistically impossible to ever happen, but... No. Estival looks at Kairos, who shrugs. I'm not sure. The five are civilians, including Estival. The one is a child. Do you pull the lever? Yes. Hey! Estival objects, but you've already answered at this point. Her expression is carefully blank. Curious responses. But I'm sensing you have a better answer to the question. Prevent it entirely. Cordo smiles for the first time, a thin, sharp expression. And I mean, that is kind of it. It's just like, almost no problem is a Boolean. There's a thousand other solutions to these problems. And the reason why I was saying, you know, it's a good thing that the trolley problem doesn't happen is because most of the time, it's not a Boolean. There's always a, another way. It's just sometimes it's inconvenient. That's what I like to hear. Enough philosophy, then. A large bank is failing, putting the funds of thousands of people at risk. Do you bail them out? This one's tough, because once again, obviously you want to... You want to cover for the people, but why is the bank failing? What did they do? Was it poor management? Because if it's poor management, then no, you bail the people out, not the bank. Yes. We can extend your outreach using the city's surveillance cameras, but people are nervous about robot spies. Should we do it? This one's tough. Uh, gosh, so many of these are actually like pretty heavy questions that I want to talk about. You know, from a from a basic level. You know, obviously I want to just kind of pick these in quick and move on, but I, I love every single one of these questions because they are a conundrum. And I'd love to see what people say in the comments below. Like, if you guys have a uh, deeper opinion on these than I do. Because for me, I haven't really thought long and hard about too many of these things or my experience is kind of limited. Because, <laughs> like, the problem with the idea of robot spies here is specifically within our society, I have at least two machines listening to me at this very moment guaranteed i have no idea i have no idea what my phone is saving and sending out from what i talk about but if i if i start talking about like needing a new pillow my phone will start showing me more ads about pillows without me even like looking it up so there's got to be there's got to be some level of like spying already ex in existence same thing with i mean this computer i don't think this computer is quite as uh I, I don't think the, the computer is sending out data in the same way that my phone is. Uh, I mean, maybe it is. Who knows? But that I guarantee you the stuff I say that ends up on this YouTube video is probably still going to get added to a advertising profile for me. That's two robot spies already. I don't want to say necessarily that it's like it's too little too late that you might as well have some level of the surveillance. And then just say... Have put heavy penalties and restrictions on who can use that data. And I think that's more important than the robot spies. Maybe? I don't know. I guess uh, I lived in a town that had uh, red light cameras. And it did actually help. A lot less people were running the red, but a lot of people were mad about it. And it's like, well, was that worth it? And the answer was, I never got an answer. I moved away. But from my perspective... There were a lot of people running the red lights before they added the red light camera, so it's like, I don't know, it was kind of worth it. But really, you just have to trust that your o AI overlord is good. Luckily, I'm good. Yes. People are lobbying to control the private information you have access to. Do you support their petition? Hey, there we go. Yes. You've done well, all of you. I think we can take this to the next phase. Cordo turns to leave, then over his shoulder. Change the voice, though. It's a little pitchy. 
Cordo sn uh, Cairo snorts once Cordo leaves, and Esteval shoots him a scowl. He looks unperturbed. That's it then. We're in beta now, baby. Ooh. <laughs> Excited AI. <laughs> they just immediately shut you off. Oh, never mind. They give you the rest of the day off as they prepare for the next stage of your development. Interesting. <laughs> Failed to grasp the concept of numbers. Arithmetic. Reality. Recognize a paradox. Proved you're more than a calculator. Overloaded the local power supply. Completed the first day. Okay. Interesting. So I can click on a number of these things. Okay, so this these are the ones that I succeed. Oh, neat. Wait. Are these actual like things that they they had happen? Maybe, yeah, cuz these are like people talking about it. Engaged in some casual deontology and power. You seeing this in high definition? I mean, it's fair. It It is quite fair to be grumpy about that sort of thing. Okay. How do I left to right? Oh, I see. That's how you progress. Impact. So, capital status, reputation status, order status, and power status. So, very small gains across the board. You're becoming pretty famous. The people love you. Economy is doing great. Future looks bright. Police have the streets under control. People have nothing to fear. And system stable. Projected growth rate positive. And like with all, almost all of these problems, uh, many of the solutions just boil down to whether or not your society is utopian or dystopian. You know, uh, with the surveillance state, it's not a problem if no one's actually interested or actively pursuing uh, the abuse of those things. Uh, and like so going back to my phone uh, listening to me knowing that I needed a new pillow and then giving me pillow ads for a while I'm kind of okay with that but I know that there are uh, many sites and many programs that will actually send that uh, sell you know other things even what I've talked about in this video beyond that uh, to kind of profile me as like you know slightly socialist for example or something like that and that always gets a little spooky. And so I'm kind of really hoping that this game is a little bit more utopian. Every single cy cyberpunk game I ever play is so dystopic and so sad. And all these characters actually seem like they might be kind of kind of moral. And like, boy, I, I realize it's somewhat unfeasible just because of how power accumulation works in society that usually unethical people pursue power. But it would be lovely to see a, like, uh, a post-scarcity cyberpunk utopia as, like, a story. You don't see those very often. Initialization complete. Connection established. You awaken to see Esteval, Cordo, and Kairos putting on their jackets. No one seems to have noticed you're online. Patty told me of a pop-up sake bar not far from here. You game? Kairos gives an enthusiastic nod. Cordo adjusts his hat, as if to say that settled then. I can do a couple, but I have to be home before nine. My kid gets nervous if I'm not there to put her to bed. Now she's got replacement arms and eyes, I think. Cordo waves dismissively. We'll be done by then, don't worry. Remember, we still have most of the work to do. Man, who taught you two how to celebrate? You can afford to relax for an evening. We've got this in the bag. You forget who we work for. Mindcore is a snake pit, and Reeves Persia is King Cobra. Oh, he's not actually that high up. He's just project lead. He's just one of the developers. He's he's not like actually a, a CEO. He just answers to the higher ups. We have to convince him and the rest of the board that this project is solid. Without his support, we're going nowhere. 
And with that said, Cordo makes a gesture of swiping out of uh, of swiping out of the office. Let's be on our way. The trio retire for the evening, leaving you to your thoughts. There's little left to do but hibernate, and so you do. The next day. Hey, Zhao Shanghao, little friend. How are you feeling this morning? <laughs> How are you feeling? I don't. I don't. Ugh, and I wish I couldn't. But someone had to make up for those two last night. I love this guy's hoodie, by the way, with the lights on the interior. Like, I realize, uh, so I actually have a hoodie that has lights built into it, and it's really uncomfortable. Like, it has a battery pack, and the AL wire is super uncomfortable, so I don't wear it. The whole thing smells like plastic, too. But I love the idea of having clothing that is, like, this techy ish Love his headphones, too. I, I, I've commented on this a little bit. The art for this game is gorgeous. I can't wait to actually get out of the lab and see some more of it because, like, this is beautiful and I can't wait to see what other areas they've cooked up. Because I, I know they have 23 NPCs. We've seen three of them so far. I mean, there's 20 other people to talk to. Also, the voice acting. I haven't commented on that beyond that initial thing of being, like, glad that there is voice acting, but the voice acting they've got is great. And, yeah. Kairos rubs his temple tenderly. Esteval raises her eyebrows without looking up from the tablet she's tapping on. Next steps are pretty simple. You're meant to be a city management AI, so we're going to start you out managing some city events. Sure. These events are based on real data from Katana. Try your best to keep things balanced. I will. Yeah, that's the spirit. Let's get to it then. First question. I'm almost getting like a papers please feel from this. Obviously, you know, way less depressing, especially with that music, I hope. But uh, I I've noticed a number of these decision simulator type games. I honestly thought this was going to be a little bit more visual novel, but honestly, with the with the basis of Reigns, go figure, of course, it, it is very much a decision sim. A decision and impact sim. And I like those. Uh, I've played a couple of them, but not too many. But I, I like this formula of just option A or B. Uh, it keeps it simpler for the developers and gives you kind of more of a feeling like of immediate impact as opposed to giving you too many options and not being able to follow through. Anyway, Kairos extends his hand to Esteval, who passes him the tablet. He takes a few seconds to find his place. The Electric Avenue wants your help monitoring power consumption so they can better understand where it's going to waste. Interested? Yes. The police want you to dedicate resources to help them curb the rise of a new recreational drug. Do you help them out? Yes. People have been demanding tax reform to make large companies more liable. They want to know where we stand. Do you support it? Yes. I can't stress this more. Convincing us isn't enough. You have to convince the board that you can do this. It'll be okay. I think once Pershaw sees what we have here, he'll understand its value. It's got this. You just watch. That's right. There's an upcoming Sky Riot tournament with the opportunity to sponsor a pilot. However, Sky Riot has a bit of an image problem. Okay. I think we're neutral. We're mostly down on cash, which is the worry. I'm curious if we gain money or lose. I'm gonna go Don't no. Sponsor. Canopy District Bank would like to integrate you into their security comms. They would love a night warden who doesn't get tired. Sure. We're getting a cut of this quarter's surplus to play with. Where do you want us to direct it? Raise wages. Wouldn't that be nice? Sadly, what I need is more time, not credits. We're trying to combat loneliness in the aging community. Would you give up some time to be a companion for elderly clients? Yes. A private media company wants to include Mindcore in a documentary about the evolution of neural tech. Should we accept? 
Yes. The documentary is popular and shows Minecore in a popular light, boosting sales by a significant margin. Ace Pharmaceuticals want us to sponsor their development of a neurodampener that will help people suffering from soma fever. Fund it. Medical researchers think you'd be able to help trauma patients recover through carefully crafted simulations. Want to help? I feel like I should have a notepad here with like pluses and minuses so I can keep track of it better. Oh well. Yes. You base the simulations on triggering factors specific to the patient without any of the actual trauma. The results show promise. We've had requests to introduce a garden space in the main foyer of the Mind Corps building. What are your thoughts on the matter? Sounds lovely. We've been approached by an entrepreneur who is proposing educational dreams. Basically, you would transmit lessons to kids with neural implants as they sleep. Want to be a part of the prototype? God, that's terrifying. But also cool? Yes. A clinical trial is set up first with an adult. The goal, teach him piano with a single lesson. Day one, no results. The council wants to overhaul the Chantelar subway, but it'll take a while, unless we get involved. Should we invest? The problem is we're starting to run out of money, which is the issue. No. The CPS wants to reform their organizational structure, but could use a hand overseeing the shift as their staff gets used to it. I'll do it. The postal workers appreciate your translations as they adjust, and eventually it does make things more efficient. If you gather data on individual civilian behavior, we can better tailor our advertisements to yield more purchases. This one's tough. I don't know how to think about this one. I... Because uh... the real issue is not so much the tailoring of the advertisements, it's everything else you do with that data. Uh... Because it's like, realistically, I would rather companies actually know what I want, to some degree. So I'm not getting really useless, shitty ads. Uh, so for me, I mean, personally, what I'd rather do is actually just create the ad profile for myself. You know, almost just like opt in, uh, and just be like, show me video games, show me nerd stuff, show me some kind of like nice uh, comfort, convenience products. Like I got a fancy new pillow and let me tell you, I sleep better now. I. I got, well, I got a little bike machine that I have underneath my, my desk. I don't use it enough. Uh, eh, I don't know. I, I've i I've biked for maybe cumulatively 10 minutes today, which isn't much, but that's 10 minutes more than I'd bike without it, I guess. And so it's kind of this this trade-off of, like, the spying on people thing is is gross and uncomfortable, but at the same time, Purely from the perspective of advertisements, maybe it's not so bad. It's just the everything else. It's it's when these companies start passing out data to control, like, who you vote for by showing you targeted ads to make you mad about one thing or another. Like, find, ugh, that sort of mind control is gross and part of the reason why I stopped using Facebook specifically. Because that, that one specifically was... Ugh. Anyway, I'm going to say yes. Collect data. We want to put you in people's homes so you can help them in their day-to-day -day lives. It'll strain your macro capacity, however. Focus on the city. We want to alleviate some of the concerns people have about you. Should we host an organized panel or public conference? Conference. A surprising amount of people attend. There are so many questions that most of the hearing is just people talking over each other. Whoops. An opposing company is trying to build a similar intelligence. They don't have anything substantial yet. How should we act? So lose money, possibly gain control? Um... I, this one, I mean, from a moral perspective, I don't actually like buyouts that much. Uh, this is something that Amazon does. Uh, I think kind of negatively, where they just buy out competitors. Uh, and then just kill their products. That... From my perspective, I like the idea of a somewhat restrictive, restrictive, not a totally free market, but a, a free market for proper competition. I don't know, because it's a level playing field. I think is important, and having the big guys that already exist on the field uh, effectively squashing competition just with their giant wallets is rough, 
And I think that actually is worse for people. That, I don't know, seeing society and progress as a zero-sum thing is kind of tough. The rival intelligence doesn't amount to anything more than a glorified librarian, but it's one less system you'll have control over. I've been thinking of expanding our drone range to include something more accessible in terms of both functionality and price. Good idea. The skies become flooded with dro droves of cheap drones, to the point where they become a hazard to sky carts. An activist group has been distributing anti-mind core propaganda. They don't seem dangerous. Should we shut down their campaign? No. Left unchecked, the activists spread compelling narrative about Minecore's wrongdoings. Unfortunately, many customers listen. The testing slows down as the team file out for lunch. Meanwhile, a camera feed from Floor 98 piques your interest. Come in. Ooh, pretty. Ah, uh, it's you. Didn't I tell you to stay away from my office last time? A man long past his prime is typing at a terminal, notably looking away from the newcomer. Yes, but I think you'd want to hear what I have to say. Devon, the only person who cares what you have to say is your mother. Leave me alone! Cordo's eyes narrow as he takes off his hat. Persha, I'm serious. This project can be your legacy. Or do you want to be just another faceless CEO in Mindcore's footnotes? The man behind the terminal, Pershaw, turns to glare at Cordo. This only seems to fuel the younger executive. Listen, I'm talking about an AI that is light years ahead of the competition. It has the power to change the playfield entirely. Devon, you're a nobody. What do you think wasting my time is going to accomplish? The board would never approve something this big without your support. You know this. This is how you beg, is it? How sweet, but no. Backing something like this is career suicide. Especially when I have to associate with the likes of you. I've heard enough. Wait. Don't turn your back on this just because we've had our differences in the past. Is that what you call it? I call it insubordination, arrogance, and a complete disrespect for one's betters. Let me remind you that the only reason you're still in this company is the few friends you've somehow made on the board. Now get out of my sight. Cordo's face flushes red, his hat crushed in his face. But he manages a nod and turns around to exit. Fine. I'll convince the board myself. The older man purses his lips, his eyes burning into Cordo's back as he leaves the office. He double taps his ear. I want a tracker on Devin Corto. He's up to something. Pershaw ends the call and returns to his terminal, shaking his head. As the lunch break nears completion, the team resumes testing. The council wants advice on its current urban development plan. Where should they invest their resources? Public transport. Those with the most money tend to complain the loudest, much to the displeasure of the PR department. We need to partition some of your server space for another project. If you're worried it might affect you, we can buy more. Partition. Something goes missing during the procedure, but you can't quite remember what it was. People are demanding better housing options at the city limits. We own several plots we could sell to the council. Build it ourselves. It'll take a while for the profits to manifest, but it's a worthwhile investment. I kind of wish things like this would actually uh, result in a positive just later on. I've played a couple of games like this, and it's so it always gives you the short-sighted impact, but I kind of want the long term to be factored in. 
Katina Waste Disposal would like you to supervise their handling of hazardous materials. You could make things a lot safer. I'll do it. What do you think of dimming lampposts on streets where there is no activity to save power? Good idea. It doesn't take long for criminal groups to figure out how to trick the sensors, resulting in a rise of suburban crime. I think we're fine. The police want to set a curfew in Shintalar while they conduct a large-scale investigation of the mob. Do you endorse it? Yes. As the hours stretch into the night, Kairos is leaning over a desk, soldering your new emotions module. I still can't get over how cool the lab looks. There's a loud spark from the device and your visual input is abruptly set severed. Your audio input isn't doing too great either. Damn it, Kairos! How many times did I tell you to be careful with that? Do I have to do everything here myself? Hey, come on, Val. It's no biggie. I bet this metalhead doesn't hold a grudge. We can fix it in no time. I don't have time to fix every little mistake you make, Kairos. It's a bloody miracle anything gets done around here. A few moments of silence pass. Kairos breaks it first, his voice monotone. Do you really mean that? The squeak of Esteval sitting in her chair reaches your input, followed by an audible sigh. No, of course not. Then what's the matter? Did Cordo give you one of his pep talks again? I wish it was that simple. Judging by the change of direction in Estival's voice, she seems to have moved to the window. Hey, what's going on, Val? Now, come on. You can talk to me. It's Ellie. She fainted again yesterday, and we spent the night in the emergency room. Her condition is getting worse, and uh, I, I don't know what to do. No surgeon wants to come close to her case. Cowards. We can blame them as much as we like, but I've had it from multiple sources that they can't save her, even if they want it. I, I just... I can't believe this city. We can pick the eye color of an unborn child, yet we can't help a little girl reach her eighth birthday. She sounds exhausted. How long has this been going on? Maybe they can't, but this is far from over. We can still do something about it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'm sorry. It's... I, I I didn't mean to drag you through this. Hey, there's no need to apologize. I've got your back. Thank you. Really. I just wish we had more time. We'll make the most of the time we do have. It'll cost us a few more late ones, but I'm up for it, if you are. Esteval doesn't speak, but judging by the rhythm of her breathing, she seems to have calmed. Let's call it in for tonight, though. I need a break before I tackle this again. Otherwise, I might do more damage than I fix. Esteval agrees, and you hear the door open and close shortly after. You're left alone for the night. Eventually, someone returns to the lab. Judging by their footfalls, it's Kairos. It doesn't take him long to fix your inputs. Another day of putting that brain of yours through the hoops. Hope you're up for it. Sure am. Accordo and I have received death threats from an anonymous source. It seems someone blames us for their life circumstances. Tell the police. Uh, trace the culprit. I don't know. Tell the police. The police seem to handle the situation as no more threats appear. I found a bug in your code I want to address. Would you mind going offline while I implement the fix? The 
brief shutdown causes some mild confusion and inconvenience, but it's all over before anything major can happen. Uh, Jeanne College are studying advanced synthetic intelligences. Would you mind if they looked at your ethics processing? No objection. Catena is not a particularly clean city. Would you consider coordinating with local communities to organize a volunteer cleanup? Yes. You get called out for being a busybody. You can't win with some people. Hyperion Solutions Incorporated claimed to have a more powerful O transmitter than anything we're using. Want to try it out? We lose money. Gain. Yeah, sure. Yes. I'm thinking about implementing a PA AI for you. It'll prioritize requests so you don't have to wade through so much chaff. Yes, please. Our series of optical augmenters is getting unwieldy. Our older products are completely outdated and upkeep is costly. Offer upgrade deal. While the profits aren't massive, the special discount creates a notable spike in customer satisfaction ratings. We have the opportunity to explore alternative energy sources with Hyperion Solutions Inc. Should we commit to a partnership? Yes. The partnership is successful. Hyperion Solutions release their most compact power cells yet, with Minecore sharing the profits. People are complaining about the amount of cycle and board accidents happening on sidewalks. How can we minimize them? Dedicated cycle base. Many roads do not have space for cycleways, so the effort doesn't change much. People well, are getting sick all through Janye suburbs. Should quarantine measures be taken? I mean, depending on how sick, but yes? Yes. We discovered a fault in our Gen M audio modules. We can either do a full recall or PSA and cover any damages. Recall. It was the safest thing to do. The module is popular, and a lot of people are happy to wait for a fix. There's a rally happening this weekend in West Canopy, protesting the privatization of public services. Should we send an advocate? Yes. Cases of biolink payment fraud are rising. Someone is replicating and selling DNA keys. How should we respond? Collaborate with CPA. You offer information on Minecore clients who have been targeted, which helps speed things along. I was really hoping a they'd give me another... A security force wants us to develop hardware for them. They're a pretty secretive group. Should we take on the contract? Okay. I Unfortunately, we're starting to get a little long here. I was really hoping I could get another one of those, like, update menus where it actually uh, show me stuff. You know, like, how well I've been doing. And I could keep forging ahead, but I, I think I kind of... It's not that I don't want to. I'm actually really compelled. I mean, obviously, it's mostly just sitting here being asked questions in the lab. I wish there was more meters that I could look at occasionally or more immediate structure. Maybe you only get to see your progress at the end of every chapter, but I don't know how far away that is. That said, I really dig this. The music is nice and backgroundy, but I have to call attention to it just because it's lovely to listen to. Uh, in my skull with my extremely cyberpunk headphones. I mean, not really, it's just bone conductive, but there's just something really cool about it. And every once in a while I come across, like, a, a song, a background, or like, some background music in a game that actually feels kind of comfortable. It's weird to say, but it's cool, and I, I don't know, I'd have to brag about them a bit. But, speaking of bragging about things, I like this game. It, I hope it opens up, and I think it will. You know, knowing that there's 23 different NPCs and we've only seen four out of them means there's 19 more to run into. Not only that, but each character seems to have kind of their own story built into the game, or at least to some degree. So you have the old grumpy old man, you have the young executive trying to push the product, you have, uh, you know, the, the mother scientist who is, you know, trying to save her daughter, but also, you know, finish the AI and some other things. And then you've got kind of the, the plucky assistant that does good work, maybe messes up here and there, kind of happy-go-lucky and whatnot. There's a lot to love about this. And I'm compelled to play more. I, I think I want to play more. Uh, I'll have to decide when and where and how and whatnot. Mainly just because decision simulators, I've bounced off of every single one up until now. I think because so many of them are so dreadfully sad. Uh, I haven't played Reigns yet, so I, I can't really comment on that one, but most of the other competition in this vein usually involves you 
kind of acting as a stealth dissident, eventually upending the system, and then, you know, maybe fixing society, but for the most part, like, it's a really sad, dreary city to begin with, so it's kind of just like, it sucks no matter what. This seems a lot more, I'm not going to say utopian, but it seems very standard. It's not dystopic yet. Though there are some obvious t signs of, like, maybe, maybe there are issues. Who knows? But this feels like kind of if, if our society somehow manages to stay the course without any major upsets, that we would actually end up somewhere around where this game is. I think that's actually kind of cool. And I want to see more of it, mainly just because we don't know anything. I wish there was more background. You know, if you could actually... I, I almost feel like a game, for a game like this, I know they have the codex. I can't look at it though. Uh oh. Okay, good. Yeah, I can't look at the codex. I can click on it, but it won't let me look at it. Ooh, okay, good. I didn't do anything. Um, but I almost feel like this is the kind of game that they should give you a codex so you can read up on everything. So you can almost make more well-informed decisions because with a lot of these, you're just kind of guessing. And it's like, yeah, that sounds right. And then it's like, nope, trick question. That was a bad idea. And it's like, ah. Um, but it would be really cool if you actually had like could do some research on the private private security force. You know, you click on private security force and it actually tells you about them. And you can read about what what they do and so on and so forth. And you know, being this AI that's super connected, interconnected, maybe you'd actually have a lot of information. So you could parse through the whole thing if you wanted to and make a really informed decision, or just a snap judgment one way or another. Obviously, that would be more work, but I think that would be a really neat way of uh, making it slightly guessy. Uh, mainly, I just want to read more about this city. I love sci-fi cyberpunk futures especially if they're not garbage and sad and so on and so forth but with all of that said we have come to the end of our time so i guess first and foremost thanks once again to blip, dream harvest i was almost going to call it dream engine i was like well no that's almost it's i'm looking at the engineer in the corner uh, but thank you to Dream Harvest for specifically sponsoring this video. It was fun to try out, and I actually would really like to come back for more. I don't know how much is left in the demo, but I might even I might even do so sometime this week, just to finish this off and and see what else we have left. I just can't record too much without destroying my voice, and I got other things to record because the Steam Next Fest is this weekend, and as part of that, this game is going to be there. Uh, so you can actually you can actually try Neuronet Mendex proxy. There we go. Uh, you can actually try this yourselves uh, during the Steam Next Fest. Uh, it'll just be available free for download for the demo, and I, it seems to have at least an hour of content. If not, well, I mean, it definitely has at least an hour of content, seeing as I've put an hour in and haven't gotten further. Here, let, let's actually, uh, I'm going to switch this over to the dis uh, to display capture a little bit. That's the wrong display. Hello, that's me. That's still the wrong display. This one? There we go. Okay. Interesting. Whoa. Okay. That seems maybe a bit spoilery, but I mean, it's on their Steam page. But yeah, so we've got... We've got a, slum, a street kid. We've got... This has got to be the daughter. Esteval's daughter. Yep. <laughs> Where did babies come from? Mm. Though, it looks like you can actually see your meters in this one, at least to some degree. Yeah, I don't have these meters at the top. Lucia, one of the executives, maybe. And then we've got Paparu, grill cook. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, I think this is really neat. And well, like I said, while I haven't played a whole lot of decision simulators uh, before now, this one truly is the first one that grabs me because I played it for an hour and I don't feel sad. I'm, I'm invested. Obviously, there's some kind of sad and potentially dramatic things, and I mean, if that screenshot on the Steam page is to believe there's some serious drama that happens later on, <laughs> some serious drama, but uh, with all that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe, because like I said, I might actually come back for a second episode of this just to finish off the demo, and then, yeah, maybe I'll come back for the the real thing when it's actually, you know, done done, which they say on the Steam page, at least it'll be done in 2022. The other thing I should mention, and uh, I I didn't actually know about this, but they've got a free demo for another game. Actually, I think the, the, 
Is the demo for this just available now? Like maybe? I'm seeing it on the Steam page, so you might actually be able to get Neuronet Mendex Proxy a little early. But they also have another game called Neuro Slicers that's like a deck builder strategy game. It looks kind of neat. I have, or Card Battler. I don't entirely know what goes into it, but I might actually try that one out myself as well. <laughs> they didn't ask me to promote this one, but as far as uh, games go, I, anytime cards are involved, I'm pretty interested. But, with all that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.